Hey, Stephen Priest here with Class1ModelWorks.com, and we want to talk a little bit today, uh, give you a little more information on the 86-foot Thrall box cars. Uh, amazing cars, we worked hard bringing them out, and uh, they're actually a fairly incredible model. So let's dig right in and talk about some things, some things that we uh, were wanting to do to bring into the, the model world. There's been a lot of 86-foot box cars out available uh, over the years, starting with some of the old earlier Athern things. and. Uh, which, you know, for their day were great models, but of course we've gone way beyond that now and other companies have slowly raised that bar. And of course we're in that game and we're raising the bar as well. So let's talk about some things right off. First of all, one of the things we've done with these cars since one of the most noticeable things in the car is the level of sharp, crisp detail. We wanted to make all of the detail, the rivets, uh, all of the, the roof line, the Stanray roof, the door rails, and of course all the door details really, really crisp. In other words, the detail on them is very sharp and very specific. So if you look at the door on these cars, the doors themselves are made of multiple parts. All of the, uh, the door mechanism, which are the vertical rods on the door, as well as the, uh, the spinnable latch. There's actually a latch that turns that latches all the door into place on the car. It's right here in the center. It was a separate part as well. And then of course the door track itself, which runs along the bottom of the door and the upper door track are all separately applied pieces. So those have a, a modicum of super detail to them. It's really, really, really uh, close to what's on the prototype. <clears throat> a couple other things we've done. The tack board, we actually have uh, laser etched uh, and there's actually wood grain on that where it's been UV printed. So that's a kind of a really cool uh, thing as well. You can actually see wood grain in the car door itself. Um, beyond that, uh, we've got really accurate etched metal end crossovers, uh, very accurate handbrake on the end, and then separate grab irons or separate railings all around the end. And then we've also got all the detail for the cut lever. Because I'm an active modeler, one of the things that really irritates me is when I walk around the railroad after an operating session and find stirrups laying all over the place. So our stirrups are actually brass. Uh, they're actually uh, bonded onto the car through a set of really deep, very strong holes that go into the car. So these are not going to break off and they're definitely not going to just break in place either. So we've addressed those two issues with the stirrups breaking off, laying around your layout and then just them breaking on the car as well. So they're almost indestructible uh, in place on the car. And that's one of the things we really, really wanted to go for uh, on these cars. We've uh, spent a lot of time matching the colors. We've got some pretty good color match. Uh, we've worked with uh, some of the historical societies to get colors. And uh, then we also have several colors of, if you look at the car, you think, well, there's just silver on there. There's actual multiple colors of silver on here. The roof itself is done in a galvanized color and the door itself is done in, in an aluminum color. So even though you may think, oh, there's just silver, there's actually a couple different colors of silver on there, which uh, worked with to really, really raise the bar on the car itself. The other thing we've done with these cars is, of course, these were in pools and they had a lot of interesting service lives. So when we had the opportunity to go out and find out what service pools or what pools these were in, we took the time to, on the sides of the car, actually put the pool service information on the car. So there's a variety of different pools and a variety of different information provided on the cars uh, for those, those pools. So another really cool thing about these cars and freight cars in general is often as human beings, we're viewing freight cars from the side and we really don't get a look down on top of them unless we're on an overpass or on a hill or if you're at Cajon or someplace where the idea of rail fanning there is to look down on the equipment. One of the things that you'll notice a lot of the time about equipment is uh, newer equipment generally when it comes in uh, will have like the galvanized roof will be completely separate in paint color from the sides and there's a definite demarcation zone here uh, because the cars were built and the care was taken to mask uh, the paint off from the, the galvanized roof. What happens later in a lot of cars lives, especially when you get into repaints is you're going to end up with cars that have overspray on the roof. And so we've, uh, we've managed to uh, mimic this in model form. And so the cars that kind of have the outline around the edge, that is basically a car where the car, the car shops in Topeka, in this case on the Santa Fe, just went in, they were just in there painting. And when they painted, they just oversprayed a little bit onto the roof. And so you get this interesting yet really neat pattern on the roof itself. So the other thing we've taken time to do is a lot of really uh, just finite detail. 
Uh, here's an example. On the Santa Fe cars, if you look, the Santa Fe logo itself is bright white, but the Santa Fe reflectors actually kind of have an off-white off tan look to them, which is what happened with the reflectors in the real world. They never really looked bright white. They kind of looked kind of an off-tan because, of course, obviously what they are is they're a, a reflective kind of a glass bead in there. So we've uh, modeled that uh, to a T on the cars, so that's represented on the cars as well. We also have uh, the two major underframe types. We've got the cushion underframe, and then we've got the end of car cushioning. The cushioning underframe is really neat because in the bottom of the car itself, it's got all the spring mechanism built into what would be the sliding sill through the car. And that is a really neat detail to add to cars. And then of course on the end of the cars here, <clears throat> it's got the correct uh, uh, coupler uh, mount, the correct draft gear for each of the car types. So there's actually several different types of underframe on these cars as well. Another cool thing about this is when they did these cars, since this entire underframe slides through the car on the prototype from end to end, in order to tie this, the structure from side to side together, they had to put these little sub-beams across the bottom so the sill could slide through underneath them, but the, two, uh, the structure through the car would remain as a single beam, so they went down, over, and back up in the car. So we've modeled that as well. As well, as all the complete brake rigging, complete gear, uh, brake gear, even the, uh, the cut lever or the air bleed rod is in there uh, in super detail. Another thing we've done on these cars uh, is we've, uh, with the wheel sets that we've had machined, we've had the wheel set sides painted in a uh, kind of a light rust color, kind of a, uh, a silvery rust color, so they represent uh, wheel sides uh, much better than a lot of representations that are out there. So. You can also see here, you can see the, the separately applied and highly detailed door tracks on the bottom of the doors here. Uh, and of course, this car has got uh, four pairs of doors, so that's uh, represented there. The paint on the cars, we've also taken time to make very opaque. If you look at the, uh, the red here and the white, you're not getting any bleed through of color at all between there. So these are all things that we've worked on here. These cars are, uh, are selling very, very well. Um, we expect probably at least half of them to be sold out when the cars arrive here. And uh, if you'd like to get your hands on some of these, the way to guarantee doing that is to go out and pre-order. So these cars are currently available on class1modelworks.com for $59.99. They're going really fast, and I will tell you right now, a couple of them are just about sold out. And like the Santa Fe ones, they're going to be gone here pretty quickly in all the numbers because we have uh, doing multiple road numbers of each road and so they're going to be out here, uh, we're going to be out of stock relatively quickly. So, but they are currently available. Hop online, class1modelworks.com, and pick yours up today. Um, I tell you, we poured our heart and soul into these. This is basically a car that if I was scratch building, everything that's here would be exactly how I would do it. So you're able to take advantage of that and, uh, and pick them up today.